In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a way to create complex data validation checks in Excel so that you can make sure the users of your file who are inputting data in your template that they don't make any mistakes, especially if you need to make sure that they input the correct combination of text and numbers in a cell. So in a previous video, we covered the basics of Excel's data validation. If you missed that, I'm going to put the link to it below the video. But what if we have more complex cases? To get a hang of how Excel's custom data validation works, let's try and solve for these three cases. In the first case, we want to create a data validation right here where the user can input company code, but we have to check that the first character is any text followed by four digits. How do we do this check? we can use a formula for it. So if we go to data validation right here under in the data tab on data validation, we can select custom and we can input our formula right here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to input my formula in the cells right here because when I input it in the cells, I get Excel help with my arguments. Right? So whenever you're dealing with more complex formulas, it's always easiest to write it in the cell first. And then once you're happy with it, copy and paste it in here. Okay. So let's go back and think about our formula. We need to do a few checks here. What are those checks? Well, one check is that we need to make sure that the total number of characters equals five, right? So that's one check. So I'm just going to write them here and we can do each single check separately and then we can combine them into one check. What's the formula for this one? Well, we can use the len function, right? That gives us the number of characters in a text. We're going to have our data validation here. So I'm just going to click on this cell, close bracket, press enter. So now let's just put in some dummy text here. So I'm going to put C2345. Okay, so total number of characters is five. Ultimately, I want these to result in true and false values. So I'm actually going to write out the test here. Len A5 equals five. Okay, in this case, it's true. If I delete any of these numbers, it's going to revert to false. Okay, what's the second test? Let's do the numbers first. We want to check that the last four characters are numbers, which also means that the combination of these four numbers must be a number. Which formula can I use to strip out the last four characters? I can use the write function. I just have to click on my text and decide the number of characters I want to show from the right hand side of the full text here. And I want to get four out. I see my number here and I could check if this is a number, right? That's something that's going to give me true and false values. So let's wrap this up in the is number formula. Now I get false here. So it doesn't think two, three, four, five is a number. Why? Well, let's take a look at it. I'm going to highlight this and press F9. We can see our number, but it's inside quotation marks it actually sees it as text. I'm going to press Ctrl Z to go back. To turn this into a number, we can perform some mathematical operation on this. So we could multiply by one, we could add a zero to it, or there is also a function that allows us to do that. It's called the value function. We could wrap this up in the value formula. Okay, so now let's check this. It's true. It does see it as a number. Right, so if I change one of these to, let's say, a character, I'm going to put T in there, it's false. Okay, so this part is fine as well. Now, for the last check, we want to see if the first character is non numeric. There is a function in Excel and it's called isText, but similar to isNumber, isText is also going to return yes for numbers inside a text. So I'm just going to keep it simple. And instead of checking if it's text, I'm just going to check if it's not a number. So if it's not numeric, 
But first, let's strip out the first character of this. What formula can I use here? The left function. That's my text. I just want to get the first character out, so I put one in there and I get a C. Now, if I put this in is number, and again, I put the value function in there. Yes, I need another bracket. I get false. I want this to revert to true if it is text, so I'm just going to put not. So basically, if it's not numeric, then it should return a true. So let's just test this. If I change this to a number, this one is false. If the total number changes, this one is false. So basically, the way we can bring these together is with an AND function. Only if each single result reverts to true, this means that the value input has passed the validation. To combine them to one formula, I'm just going to activate my clipboard. Click on this little icon here. You can also do the shortcut key Control cc if you already have a tick mark here. So let's start copying. Just going to press Control c on this, press Escape to leave, and repeat the same thing for the other formulas. Right here, I'm going to combine them all together. I'm going to say equals and and go through my clipboard. So just click on this Excel separator, click on this separator and click on this, close the bracket, press enter. Okay, so that's my final formula. I'm going to highlight, copy, press escape, go to where I want to have my data validation, go back to data, data validation, select custom and paste in the formula. Let's check. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. Let's just put all numbers as well. That doesn't work. That works. Okay, so once I'm happy with it, I can copy and paste my data validation to wherever I want. So I'm just going to highlight these cells, right mouse click, paste special, and select validation. I can also add in an input text here. So going back to the data validation, I can put an input message here just to make it clear what the people should input and also why they're getting an error. And this is what I showed you how to do in the basics of data validation. So I'm just going to move on now to the next one. Here we want to have the first two letters fixed and we want them to be PT followed by four digits. How could we set this one up? In this case, our checks are similar to this one, right? Except that the full length of this should be six. Okay, and I'm just going to put one example here. So let's say PT4534. That's one check. The other check that the last four characters are numeric, that's the same. So I'm just going to copy and paste this here. Now, the only thing that's quite different to what we did before is that we are actually checking what the first two characters should be. So what formula could we use here? We can use the left function, but this time we're going to make sure that the two characters from the left hand side equals PT. Okay, and that's it. I'm just going to clear these and copy and paste them back to my clipboard. Now again, I'm going to combine them with the AND function. So just click on this, Excel separator, click on this, and click on this one. What was the next step? We need to copy our formula, press escape, go to where we want to have the data validation, go back to data validation, settings, under custom, we're going to paste in our formula. Okay, so let's just quickly check if I have TG. Okay, so PT, any number is going to do the job. Now, obviously, once you're done with this, you're going to remove all of these helper cells. This is just to help you write the formula for the custom validation. Next one. For this case, the first two letters can be anything. How do we account for that? The part that's the same, I'm just going to copy 
and paste here. For the last check, where we're checking for the two letters, how do we do that? Could I actually just use this formula that we originally had, where I'm just checking the one letter? Could I just update this to check two letters and see if they're not numeric? Let's try that. Basically, everything is pretty much identical to what we did in the first case, except our length is six instead of five. The only other thing I changed is that we're going to check the first two characters and see if they're not numeric. I'll put TT and a number. This looks good. I'm going to change these to two numbers. This looks good because the last one should give me false. But now, what if I have one letter and one number? This should also give me false, but it doesn't. It gives me a true. And the reason for that is that when I take this part and I press F9 on it, I get false because the combination of B4 is not numeric. And that's the problem here. What I could do is to add another condition here and check for the second character and make sure the second character by itself is not numeric. I'm going to keep the original condition the same. I'm just going to check the first character, right? So that shouldn't be numeric. But now I'm going to do a similar thing for the second character. Except here there is a better function for this, the mid function. The mid function allows us to take any specific text from this whole text here and we can decide where we want to start. First argument is our entire text. Then we can specify where we want to start. Where do we want to start now? Number two, right? The second character. And then we can decide how many characters we want to strip out. We just want to strip out the second character only. So I just need one character. And here I get a four. So now I can do a similar thing. Like in this formula, use not is number and value. And I'm going to be a little bit lazy and copy this part and paste it in here. And I need a few brackets and one more. Okay, so now I get one false here, which means that my full combination is going to be false. If the first one is a number and the second one is not, this one is going to be false. And if both are numbers, they're both going to be false. Right, so you can also use other array functions here. So you could use the aggregate function, but the data validation box doesn't like that in there directly. So you'll have to go through name manager and then to data validation. Writing it in this way avoids you using an extra step of going through name manager. Okay, so again, we need to do the same thing. I'm just going to copy these formulas, combine them with an AND function, and just go through my clipboard and then close the bracket. This entire formula, I'm going to copy it, go to where I want to have my data validation, go back to custom, and paste my formula. So now let's check this out. It's good. There's a problem. That looks good. Okay, so that's how you can use custom data validation to add more complex checks inside the templates that you send out to your users. If you found this video useful, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this one, don't forget to press the subscribe button so that you can get updates when new videos come out.